Okay, we're over at the shaper and I'm cutting the, the keyway into the washers. Here you can see the overall setup. I have my angle plate at the end of the table and I have a, a riser block down here, which this is just a ground piece of steel hardened. Uh, it's one of those setup blocks I have. And I have two stops just clamped to the angle plate left and right. And to do the slotting, I take just one of the washers and drop it in and it's registered. It's uh, aligned by those two stop blocks on the outside and by the riser block down here. It can move side to side and up or down. And also not in this direction because there is the angle plate. Now I just take two C-clamps which are plenty strong enough because the cutting forces all are directed into the angle plate. The, um, the C-clamps are only there so the washer does not fall out. Okay, you're looking at the slotting tool in here. This is the washer held by the two C-clamps and the tool clears through the slot in the angle plate. So, uh, we're good to go. Just double checking. Um, I, I look if the tool takes a cut on both sides. Um, and if that's the case, it's centered. Okay, I took a very very light pass by moving the ram by hand, and you see two witness marks down here where the where the edges of the tool touch the bore, and as these two witness lines are pretty much the same width, my tool is on center. Uh, that's my way, or that's pretty much the way pretty much everybody centers a slotting tool in a bore because it's just fast and convenient. And 99% of the time it's accurate enough. Okay, let's get some cutting oil on this tool. Check for clearance. And okay, and I'm just feeding down by hand, leaving the hand on the hand wheel and going down about two hundredths of a millimeter per stroke. Another one done, taking off the C-clamps, removing the part and loading in a new part and just clamping it with the C-clamps. Building such a simple fixture for production run can speed up work very good. Okay, I had to machine a piece of 6 by 6 millimeter hot roll steel down to 4 millimeter square, or in fact uh, 4 by 4.5 4 uh, so it's a snug fit into oh there's a snug fit indeed um, ah there we go uh, well a slight burr um, very snug fit might have to chamfer the corners a bit because it doesn't go down all the way but um, we will cut this up into sections. I will cut them a bit longer, then we're going to silver solder them into the washers. And then we're good to go. And as you can see, this, should, this slips over the, over the axle quite nice, or over the adapter, and you can't rotate the washer anymore. That's exactly what I wanted. So. Let's cut this up. So I had the washers and the keys in the ultrasonic cleaner just to get rid of all the cutting oil. Now I'm using some flux, high temperature flux for silver soldering. And I'm pressing in the keys 
for silver soldering. Just like this and give them a bite with the good Nipex pliers. So they are nice and flush. I ground a fairly big uh, chamfer on the end of the keyway so the solder, the silver solder has a place to go. Okay, I'm taking a facing cut to clean up the brazing and get rid of the scaling of the two. Um, starting with this side and later I will do the inside too, so brazing doesn't uh, protrude above the surface. There we go. Uh, reasonable surface finish. Okay, I changed to my small 3 chart chuck so I can machine the other diameter of these uh, washers to give them a skin cut and as you can see I can them chuck from the inside with the uh, outside stepped jaws and this should work pretty okay. Uh, no special needs and precision there, just uh, skimming down the diameter and machining on a nice chamfer. Turn it on the other diameter, changing to a champion tool. Then back in speed, high speed steel tool. There we go, nice, nice chamfers on the outside. Cleaned up the outer diameter, good to go. Okay, where I milled the slot into the into the adapters. Of course I have a lot of burr thrown up into the thread and also uh, the edges are super sharp so I'm using my die grinder, a uh, small proxon, yeah I call it die grinder but it's a, it's a Dremel without power. But it's, it's nice and compact, I like it, the, the collets do actually run through, otherwise as the Dremel <laughs> It's made from uh, pot metal. These are hardened steel. So these are real ground uh, hardened steel collets. So this thing is actually not that bad. Um, I have this for, uh, this is pretty much 15 years old. I think this was my first power tool I ever bought. And I'm using one of the small cut of this to do the deburring. There we go. Now I change to some small files. And then I give it a, a <laughs> clean up with a, a stainless steel brush. Uh, unfortunately I cannot get small steel brush uh, or uh, bristle brushes with steel brushes that small I can get only uh, stainless. 
which doesn't really matter because it doesn't matter. Okay, I got the, this is the last one, I got the washer to fit nicely over the, the hub. I removed all the excess uh, silver solder and I'm quite happy about the fit. And this will pretend, uh, protect the wheel from coming loose in future. And the thread is nice and deburred from the, with the cutoff disc, so there we go. And then that's current state of all the wheel hubs. As you can see I fitted all the washers to them. This one is still a bit sticky. Uh, yeah, this will this will loosen over time. Um, yeah. Next step will be <laughs> uh, I can't put it off longer to machine uh, I have to machine the taper. The internal taper that fits my grinder. My, my surface grinder and my single cover grinder. So let's see how we do that. Okay, now for the taper turning. I took the original grinding wheel adapter that came with my single cutter grinder. I indicated it in the spindle of the lathe to run somewhat true. Uh, that's about one hundredth of a millimeter, half a tenth. And then I indicated the taper with the top slide. As you can see there is also pretty much no movement with the one hundredths of a millimeter indicator. The final fit up will be done by bluing the taper. So that's good. Now we can take this uh, indicator off. Uh, pull out the part, change to one of our new hubs and turn the first taper. Okay, I got the part in the three chart chuck. First we will take a skim cut on the outside and chamfer the edges, so that's done too. <clears throat> now we change to a chamfering tool. Chamfering both sides of the of this flange. Go. Okay, before I start boring the taper, I'm drilling out as much material as possible. And on the original wheel hub, this the taper is 21 millimeters deep, so I'm going to bore uh, to drill 21 millimeters starting from the tip deep. Just so I don't have to bore out as much material with the boring bar. Okay, now we are boring the taper and I'm checking the runout on the machine surface down here with the indicator and as you can see I'm down to yeah, uh, one needle's width roughly on a one hundredth of a millimeter dial indicator. And in my mind that's good enough. Um, by the way, if you want a good small scale indicator stand look up these guys, FISO, um, Swiss company, they make incredible well indicator stands.
Okay, let's pull off the grinding wheel from my single lip cover grinder. We have to remove the screw. And then the other end of this wrench has an M8 thread to pull the wheel off the taper. Just like this. And there you have your taper. Here's the spindle with the tapered end. Let's see if our taper actually fits. Okay, that feels rather good. And I think the fit is not terrible bad for a first try at least. First we will check if we get some reasonable run out. Let's lock it in place. Uh, carefully, because I don't have the thread to pull it off <laughs> in there. Let's see if we can get a, a dial indicator mounted on this guy. Okay, uh, indicator one hundredth of a millimeter. Let's let's get it to zero actually. Okay, that's a bit less than one hundredth of a millimeter. <laughs> uh, on the first try. <laughs> uh, uh, sometimes even I have luck. Normally when I turn tapers I need about 10, 10 approaches to get it right, but this time that's spot on. Okay, let's get some uh, uh, spotting blue on there. Just a... Uh, ooh, that's a bit much. Just a very thin film of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the technique the pros use. Uh, now we get our taper on there. And try to get it off, and as you can see by the bluing, we are carrying pretty much all the way down to the end and almost it's almost a bit wide on this end but as it pulls on that's fine um, I don't want I'm not going to change the settings on my on the top slide this is uh, <laughs> this is good enough for me okay I turned the not soft camera because it was pretty much the same as with the flange itself they were turned and drilled out with a, a rotor brooch then th threaded uh, 20 by 1 millimeter fine thread so they screw onto the wheel adapters rather nice uh, this one is almost a bit no just um, and I'm drilling these four holes for this face spanner I think that's the term for it um, to tighten them down. This is the high quality Chinese uh, spanner wrench that came with my two post grinder. Uh, very, but I, I rather like this. Um, this has the right dimension, so I'm over at the mill drilling these holes. I made a threaded arbor where these nuts go on for drilling. I just spin them on and uh, they're not going anywhere, so I can drill them. I also use this arbor to drill the uh, to machine the outside of these nuts. There we go. Spin the spin it off. Don't drop it. There we go. I'm gonna take my cordless uh, and just give the holes a very light deeper. 
normally I would use a hand, uh, hand deburring tool, but uh, I can't find it. <coughs> there we go, another one done. The last thing I'm going to make are two stabilizers for cutoff discs. I have these 125 millimeter, one millimeter thick, unreinforced cutoff discs for a surface grinder, and I want to use them. Um, but you cannot really use them without some way to stabilize them, otherwise, they will tend to drift off the cut. So I took some pieces of 80 millimeter aluminum and machined two spacers that go on the side of the wheel so the wheel is the, the slitting wheel is clamped between the two stabilizers here I'm just roughing down the aluminum to diameter I'm drilling out the center with a with a rotor brooch Taking a facing cut. I ream the central bore to 20 millimeters so it fits over the wheel hub. I was going a bit fast on the spindle speed there. <clears throat> and then I'm undercutting the face. This is the face where the cutoff disc will be clamped and I wanted to contact the grinding wheel only on the outer diameter, not on the whole surface. So that's the reason for the undercut. Deburring the bore with the scraper. Cleaning this recharge chuck with some compressed air. Be careful not to blow the chips into the slideways. And setting up the the other side of the stabilizer, clamping on the machined side. And as you saw, I have my chuck back stop in place. Knocking it down with a hammer so it's nicely seated. And removing the remaining material. Um, this cut was almost a bit too heavy, it, um, you can hear the strain on the motor. And taking a final cut to get it to thickness. And putting a big chamfer on the edge. And again, deburring the bore with the scraper. And we're done. So, to wrap this up, I'm going to uh, cold blue these. Um, this is the cold blue solution. It's yeah, it's not it's not new. Normally the stuff is blue. Um, right now it's this stuff, but I think it's all the same. It's all this uh, di uh, selenium disulfide, blah blah blah, um, that you shouldn't drink. I have an ultrasonic cleaner back here to clean the parts. I have some water to rinse the parts and then I'm going to drop them into the solution. Um, yeah.
Okay, you just saw me cold bluing the parts and it's still a mess. Uh, the parts are all oily and they have to soak the oil quite a bit to make the finish durable. Um, the solution I'm using is obviously um, used up and contaminated with oil or some other crap. Um, I can't use that anymore so the finish didn't come out too great but it will work. Um, it will give a porous surface that holds a bit of oil to give at least a little bit of rust uh, prevention. And as you already saw in the beginning of the, of the video, this is how the flanges look with a grinding wheel mounted. We have the flange itself, we have the washer with the, with the key in it. Let's take the nut off. That's actually the washer with the key that doesn't transfer any torque from the wheel to the nut. So um, I shouldn't have a runaway grinding wheel anymore on the surface grinder, which is slightly scary. And you also saw me make these two stabilizer discs out of aluminum. So I can use um, these one millimeter Turolit uh, cutoff wheels on my surface grinder. Should be useful at all. Um, yeah, and those have, of course, same flange. And now with all the grinding wheel adapters I made so far and the one I had already I have uh, 10. Um, 10 grinding wheel adapters I can leave my main wheel on a 46 grit uh, J hardness I think aluminum oxide I can leave on the the cutoff wheel all the time I can leave my uh, diamond cup wheel for the tool grinder on all the time. My 80 grit um, cup wheel, which is, yeah, uh, I need to order a new one. This is, uh, I use this for tool grinding all the time. Uh, narrow diamond wheel for my, for the tool and cutter grinder and a narrow grinding wheel to grind slots and surface grinder. Those are, that's the wheels that I use most of the time. Now I need to build a rack on the wall so I can hang them. So I hope this was interesting. I hope some of the techniques I showed were interesting to you. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.